Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? Praise God. Welcome to the new season. <laughs> it's a new season of prosperity. It's a new season of increase of the anointing. It's a new season. It's a new season with a next level so we can kick more devil. Glory. Psalm 1. Woohoo. Let's start right from the beginning. Psalm 1. Not someone, Psalm 1. But someone will read it. Praise the Lord. Is everybody there? We're going to sow this. Glory. Let's speak it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's the associate. In other words, he's expressing, first of all, the area he's saying, look at, blessed are those who are not connected with these things. Amen? Nor stands in the path of sinners or liars nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He's saying, blessed are those who are not connected to these things. And now he says, but look at this. But his delight is in the truth of the law of the Lord, and in his law or truth he meditates day and night. In other words, he lives by the truth of God. He does not live by his emotions. He doesn't live by anything else but what God says. And in his law, he meditates day and night. And this is what will happen for an individual that lives by the truth and meditates and puts truth before him in everything he does. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Hello. Everybody makes mistakes. But we always put the truth back in its place. It says that he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. In other words, a person that does this is going to be connected to the flow of life. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does is going to what? It's going to prosper. Why? Because he's connected to life. If you're connected to the river of life, you're going to prosper. You will have the favor of God. And it will rain. Hallelujah. Verse 4. For the ungodly it is not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment reward, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Shall perish. This is very powerful because, you know, it determines what we're connected to and everything that we do. Where you're planted or where you're connected is what you'll become. I'm going to say that again. Can you turn this up a little, Dave? Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Snap. Well, we don't have to sing the song, Let It Rain. <laughs> Again, where you are planted or connected to is what you will become. Does everybody get it? If you are connected to a life-changing ministry, you will become a life-changer. If you're cooperating for it, it is associated and connected to that ministry. If you're connected to a religious ministry, you will become religious. What you're connected to is what you will become. There's confirmation. Would you turn to Psalm 37? 
Aren't you glad you didn't ride your bicycle tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 37 and verse 3. <laughs> Glory. Let's speak it together so we can hear one another. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. He's faithful to stop the rain. Obviously, we need it. So what you are connected with, where you are planted is what you become. So if you feed on his faithfulness, you are fed by life to become a life changer. Verse 4, quick. <laughs> Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall what? Help bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Don't fret because of other people who prosper in their way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. Again, if we'll feed on his faithfulness, faithfulness will be fed by life and we'll become a life changer. Turn to your neighbor and say, become a life changer. See, either we'll be a life changer <laughs> or a death promoter, one or the other. We're either a life changer or a death promoter. We, are either, we either are a life of change or a life of stain. Amen? But it depends what you're planting, what you're connected to is what you will become. Psalm 49. Now, of course, if you're rebelling to everything that you're connected to, then you won't become a life changer. Does everybody get it? Psalm 49. Life-changing ministries produce life changers into the world. And it's not about the ministry that changes lives. It's the God of that ministry that changes lives. Amen? Psalm 40 what? Nine? Is everybody there? Verse 13. Let's speak at verse 13. This is the way of those who are foolish and of their pro prosperity who approve their saying. Like sheep they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. But the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall be consumed in the grave far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For he shall, re he shall what? Receive me. Now this is powerful. In this, if we are being fed from the tr life, we will produce life. If we're being fed from death, we will produce death. Now, there's something important that if you're not being fed and you're not planted by life, then you are promoting death. And this is the difference between those who are earthlings and those who are not. You and I are no longer earthlings. We are here temporarily. We are eternal lights, not temporary lights. And that's what makes you and I different. That's why the Lord says, don't get involved in entanglements and affairs of this world. Why? Because it's earth-like. We are no longer earth-like. 
why we are eternal like and this is where an identity crisis occurs in the body of Christ why because they're not drinking from the river of life and it produces an identity crisis they have to look up what tells them who they are when the relationship should tell them who they are 2 Corinthians chapter 5 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. Is everybody there? Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Why? Because he's connected to life. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, which is actually the ministry of life. Does everybody get that you have a ministry of life? You don't have to be in ministry. You are in ministry. If you're connected to a ministry, you are a ministry. You are a ministry of life. If the ministry is life-changing, then you are a minister of life. You don't need no certificate. You don't need no diploma. You are preordained by God and predestined. Does everybody get it? Wherever you go, you are to be a life-changer. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors for Christ, or we are ambassadors of life. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to, bear, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him as ambassadors of Christ the anointing which is the ministry of life carried by life changers you will always go back to the anointing no matter where you go does everybody get it you will always go back to the anointing because Jesus is the anointed one and his anointing everything goes back to the anointing all corruption leads back to Rome People don't realize that. But everything always leads back to Rome. But all righteousness always leads back to Christ. And Christ means anointed one and is anointing. So we are to be life changers to bring life changing opportunities to the world. We bring life changing opportunities to the world. Look at how many ministries are out there in the areas, of not only just discipleship, which brings a life-changing opportunity to an individual to become a life changer. But then there are ministries that are, 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 are missionaries. There's ministries in, in health and, you know, like mercy ship and stuff like that where they go do surgery. It changes people's lives. But again, the world, earthlings, have a ministry of death. That's why they promote and approve abortion. That is a ministry of death. My wife was telling me about a ministry today where they have vans and they go around to all of these abortion clinics and places and they wait outside and when a woman comes by, they ask her if she would like to hear the baby's heartbeat. Can you imagine that? To hear the baby's heartbeat. When a woman hears the baby's heartbeat, she changes her mind. They go in the van and get a scan and whatever, sonogram, and it's all free. And then they, this ministry then says, look, if you're willing to save the baby, we will help you. We will help you. Whether you want to ado give adoption or keep it, we will help you in every way possible. Why? So that 
heartbeat doesn't stop. Now that's life changing, isn't it? That's life changing. Because they're connected to the life changer, <laughs> the source. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 3. So we're to be as life changers. We are to be uh, bringing life changing opportunities to the world. No matter what you're doing. No matter where you are. You may think that your job is petty or your position is petty. But believe me. If you're connected to a life-changing ministry, then you are a life-changer. And God is doing something no matter where you are. He's just asking you to carry his presence there. And you don't know what's happening. And you don't need to know, but you need to trust. And eventually someone's going to come to you. You'll be able to put a prayer booklet in somebody's hand. You'll be able to tell them something. They may be in need of something. Everywhere I go, there's always some kind of an opportunity for a life change. Always. No matter it's pastry delivery or whatever. Man, the golden to Lowe's, there's always somebody there. Man, I went into Lowe's the other day and all of a sudden over the intercom, Pastor Guy, what? <laughs> Pastor Guy, we need you at the front desk. I went up there, I said, what's up? He said, here's your charge card. I said, oh, snap. <laughs> somebody turned it in. That was a life-changing opportunity for me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I would have been looking for that car trying to leave with material. Then I had to call my wife. Praise God. Second Corinthians, <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3. But you know, when you begin to think about it, how many times has God put across our path a life-changing opportunity? Not only for you, but for someone else. It could be the simplest thing. It could be a simple prayer for someone. That's a life-changing opportunity. Why? Because we are life changers. And this is where we need to have that identity that we are life changers. I don't care what's happened, what you're going through. You're going to go through it. Amen? So we must maintain that identity of who we truly are. We are no longer earthlings, though, even though we live here. We're not from here anymore. We are sent from God to this world to carry on the ministry of life changing. It is the ministry of life, isn't it? 2 Corinthians 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some other epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts. Well, I don't feel like it. Well, who asked you if you felt like it? You either accept it and believe it and express it, or you don't. You are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read by all men. See? You're being read by wherever you go. You may not know it. You may not feel it. You have no idea, but somebody's reading you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone saying, look, look, look. And there'll be something that in your divine nature that will be expressed or you may not know, but that person will. And just that moment alone could be a life-changing to that individual because you have peace, joy, and righteousness where everybody else is freaking out, especially if you go to DMV. There's a wonderful life-changing opportunity in there. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Verse 2. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. 
Clearly, you're an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not the, uh, our efficiency is of ourselves who think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, which is the ministry of life, not of the letter, but of the spirit, which gives life. For the spirit, for the, the letter kills, but the spirit does what? The spirit gives life. That's why we are life changers. Everyone say, I'm a life changer. No matter how I feel, no matter what I'm going through, Christ still dwells in me because I'm connected to the flow of the river of life. Woo! Epistle of Christ because of a heart change in us. Amen? We had a heart change. That was a life change that led to a life change, and now you are a life changer. John 10. John chapter 10. So we must maintain that position. Many people fall back to becoming a death promoter, no longer a life changer. John 10, verse 9. Jesus said, I am the door, and if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and out and find pasture, not pastor. <laughs> verse 10. The thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. The good shepherd gives us. So in this, we know that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's always trying to get us off course. That's his job, out of position. Trying to mislead us. Trying to get us to become anxious, fearful. Trying to get us to sow in the flesh so we reap corruption. I mean, that's his job. The enemy does his best to stop the flow of life in ours. And then he can mislead us into destruction. That's his job. Where it's no longer life changer, but death promoter. In 2 Peter chapter 1. Just by us gathering here tonight, we are refreshing being fed to change life, to maintain a life change, and to become a life changer. Amen? Second Peter chapter 1. Oh, happy day. In verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to what? That pertain to what? Life. This is divine power of life. And godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. His divine power of life through the knowledge of him bring a life change in us that brings fellowship with him in the Holy Spirit, releasing the divine nature and expressing himself through us so that we become life changers in everything we do. Again, it doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but it doesn't mean you're not a life changer. It's only when you begin to promote death that you're not a life changer. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4. We are ambassadors. We are a living epistle. We're a bunch of pistols. <laughs> yes. 
We are armed and dangerous. Glory. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Let's speak it. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels. That's the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are what? Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Why? To bring life as a life changer. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. Woohoo! And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Why? Because when you speak, are you releasing life? <clears throat> yes. The river of life is coming out of you. Knowing that he who raised, uh, raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. We are earthen vessels that are carrying the power of change. We are carrying the power of change. What care? Change lives. Through the divine treasure of love in me and you. Because it is the love of God that changes a life. Forgiving and then what is the treasure? The treasure is love. The treasure is forgiveness. The treasure is mercy. The treasure is grace. This is the treasure of God in me and you. It's not just knowledge, Amen. but it's the compassion character of Christ Jesus. Oozing love out wherever you go. That why you're leaving an impression of Christ. By leaving an impression of Christ wherever you go, you are becoming now a life changer. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. You can leave an impression of life even on the phone. And sometimes you need to hang up so you don't promote death. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 24. Colossians 1, verse 24. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill on up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body which is in the church which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from the ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's life in us. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to the working which works in me mightily. Christ in us, life in us, to become a life changer wherever we go. We must maintain that identity. It is vital to maintain that identity, no matter what's happening. Man, you start speaking, I'm a life changer. I'm a life changer. And you will change the atmosphere around you. Does everybody get it? Especially when you're being attacked and every voice from hell is out coming after you. Whoa, I was like. Do you ever make a simple mistake and hell really exaggerates it? I mean, they just come from everywhere. And then you just got to start speaking it. I'm a life changer. The blood of Jesus, I welcome the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, flood this place and kick their butt. 
Romans 13. When it gets overwhelming for me, I just turn it over to the Lord. I tell him, you ain't coming against me, homie. You come against me, you come against him. And he's big. Hallelujah. Romans 13, verse 11. Let's speak it. And do this knowing the time that now is high time. Awake out of sleep. For now salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, you know, when you say put on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are putting on life. You're putting on life. Life. You know, so many times we just yeah, don't comprehend. We nonchalantly, oh yeah, life. Oh, I got new life. But life. And so many people are looking for life and don't even know that they're looking for it. They think they have life because of their bank accounts, because of their uh, positions, because of this, because of that. But they don't have life unless you're in Christ. Then you truly have life. Amen. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make what? Come on. Make no what? No provision for death. I mean, that's exactly what he's saying. Put on life and don't make provision for death to fulfill its lust or its desire. Death is always, look, there's a battle between life and death. It's constant. Satan's kingdom promotes death. Jesus' kingdom promotes life. That's that. It is the only kingdom that promotes life. That's Jesus. Everything else is false, a lie, and promotes death. There is no other ministry. There is no other Savior. There is no other God. Everything else is a lie, and it promotes death. Everything. And we're to be life changers. So we need to be bold in this. We need to stand firm for what the truth is. And when we see something that's promoting death, expose it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I forget where I was at. Romans 13, verse 11. <laughs> okay, now, we're cool. So it's time to wake out of deception. It's time to wake out of carnality. Amen. It's time to wake out of selfish desires. And it's time to reset the heart. Amen. Amen. It's time to follow the truth and obey the truth. Yes. See, uh, you're the coming out of history, in other words, your past. Amen? Into destiny. Depends what you're cooperating with. What you're connected with. What you're connected with could be just promoting past and not destiny. People you associate with can be, be promoting past and not destiny. It's two different things. Christ promotes life and destiny for us. Amen? Amen? And when we are promoting life and destiny, there's life-changing opportunities that come. Always. So many times we miss these life-changing opportunities because of distractions, selfishness, whatever it may be. Emotion. Emotion is the one thing that the enemy gets at us all the time to distract us. Offense, envy, disappointment discouragement, anger, whatever it is. He, he distracts by emotions and an opportunity comes by. 
Because he knows when God is sending you an opportunity. But if you stay connected, you stay drinking of the river of life, you maintain, you're fulfilled. Then there's, no matter what he tries to do to distract you, it won't happen. Amen? Because God is our source. And this is where he must become your first love. And he must maintain your first love. And he must be maintained as your only love. He must have priority over your spouse, over your children, over your health, and over your finances. He must be priority of your life to become a life changer. Amen? Philippians 3. Oh, happy days. You know, when you truly have the Lord as your first love and your own, your true love, the one that you hold on to, then you're able to love others through the Christ love and not the lust love. Because lust love fears. Does everybody understand that? Fears. Mistrust. It's offensive. True love sees things through. It's a different, it's love from the Father, and it's life changing love. When I had my visitation from the Lord, that was what changed me. His love. I didn't know I was looking for love in all other places, but it was actually in love. I was lust. I had a desire for true love, but the problem was I was deceived in accepting all kinds of other love. Love of money. Love of drugs. Love of everything else, but the true love but when he comes into your life and he maintains your first and true and only love, then you're able to take what he gives to you to love others. No matter how stupid they are. Does everybody get it? No matter what's happening, no matter how dumbfounded, no matter how goofy, no matter what, you love all others. It doesn't matter. Why? Because you look at others as Christ, as God's children. Yes. Even though some of them are the enemies. Of, you know, but there's that divine life change of opportunity by you. Right. Philippians 3. Whoa. Verse 7. Let's grow for it. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as what? Rubbish that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may what? Know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Powerful. Not that I've already attained it or am already perfected, but I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended all of this, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are what? Ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will re reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. So we are to be setting our heart, mind, and will to fulfill 
the ministry of life by becoming a life changer and a life giver of love. We are life givers of love. We are life givers of truth of Christ Jesus. We're able to forget the past and live in the life of the future. We need to be doing more believing and less begging. Does everybody get it? More believing and less begging. God hears, he knows. Romans 6. Is everybody okay? Life changers. God is trying to place a fresh identity on us. Because the world is getting really goofy. And it's getting worse. Romans 6, verse 1. Yet shall we say then, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? That's a good question. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? the newness of life as a life changer. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, which was the promoter of death, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died to yourself is free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. So if it no longer has dominion over him, it no longer has dominion over us. As long as we are maintained connection with the flow of life, we become a life changer. Amen? For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is he trying to do here? Look at verse 11. It's powerful. Likewise, also reckon yourself. Acknowledge yourself. Take this hold of this as an identity that you have uh, uh, yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, that you are dead to sin and you are alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Reckon yourself, acknowledge yourself. This is an identity. And again, I believe that there's such an identity crisis in the body of Christ because there's so much influence of worldliness, so much entertainment. Amen. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law of sin and death, but under grace, which is the plan of escape. <laughs> what then shall we say? Shall we sin because we are... Not under the law, but under the grace? Certainly not. Hallelujah. We must be walking in a newness of life as a life changer, not a death promoter. Amen. Maintaining that identity. Philippians 3, verse 17. Philippians 3, verse 17. Is everybody there? Yeah. Brethren, join in, my, in following my example and note those who so walk as you have given a, has, have us for a pattern. For many walk, and of whom I have told you often and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame 
who set their mind on what? Earthly values, earthly things, earthly ways of life. For our citizenship is where? Why? Because you're not an earthling anymore. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Yes, we live in this world. But we don't live in this world. Amen. Your body lives in this world. But your spirit doesn't. Does everybody get it? That's why you are blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. Your spirit is in all those places in Christ. Your body is here, but Christ is in you. Can Christ be everywhere at one time? Amen. So if you're one with Christ, your spirit is with him everywhere. See, we have a hard time comprehending that. First Corinthians. So we are heavily connected to the flow of life and we become life changers. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Then one more scripture. Oh, happy days. Life changers. I am a life changer. That's what we want to be, right? We are life changers. Think about that, life. Life. What a responsibility. Life changers. Not death promoters, life changers. Verse 40, let's speak it. 1 Corinthians 15, 40. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another in star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in natural body, it is raised in spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the second, the last Adam became a what? Life-giving spirit. That's Jesus, right? So are you, are you joined with Jesus? Are you a joint heir of Jesus? Are you one with him? Then you're a life changer. However, the spiritual is not first but the natural, and afterward the spirit. For the first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So you are an offspring now of the Lord from heaven. As was, uh, hallelujah. as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are all those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the what? Heavenly man is a life changer. The last Adam, life giving or life changing. Hmm. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. <laughs> verse 1 I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be ready in season and out of season convince, rebuke, exhort throw down with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Has it come? The heck yeah. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. 
But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry as a life changer. Everyone say, I am a life changer. This is your new identity, a fresh identity from the Lord tonight to you as a life changer. We must maintain that. Don't let the devil steal it. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed to become life changers, not death promoters. And Lord, any area of our life that is promoting death and not life, please expose it, remove it. If you choose to show us, great. Other than that, you can just take it. And we ask that you continue to keep us cleansed by the blood, healed by the stripes of Jesus, and keep us connected to the eternal flow of the river of life that we may be life changers in this temporary realm for Jesus' glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.